Praise the Lord, church. Doesn't it feel great in the house tonight? I'm glad that we can gather here once again to praise our Savior. If everyone would like to stand, we're going to go straight into our prayer tonight. Um, I tell you, I've had prayer on my heart really heavy today. I can't tell you what prayer has done for my life. Prayer has took that weight off of my shoulders that I felt like I was never going to get rid of. And I want to tell you tonight, as we begin to pray, if you've got weight on your shoulders that you feel like may prevent you from seeing what God has for you tonight, ask him to remove it. Because I think God wants to speak to somebody here tonight. He wants someone to receive a word of encouragement, I believe, tonight. So if you have an unspoken, let it be made known by the lifting of your hand at this time. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Lord, God, I ask that you would begin to move and to work in every need. God, every request that we have wrote down right now, Lord, on this paper. God, you see every name. You see every situation, every circumstance, God, that we cannot partake of, that we cannot change. Oh, but God, you can move, Lord. You can perform, oh, Lord. You can move and the miraculous can go forth, Lord. I'm asking that if there are burdens that are resting upon our shoulders, God, if we feel weighed down by the vices of the world tonight, Lord, if our minds feel battered and broken, God, I pray that you would remove that weight. Lord, you'd help us to see clearly in the Holy Ghost tonight. And you'd begin to flow through this service, God, that you'd move through our hearts and our minds, and we'd be renewed by your spirit tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Um, let's remember Brother Chad and his family. Um, I'm going to mention a few of these prayer requests. I looked over them on an accident. Sister Helen Sellers, Carolyn Lloyd, uh, Brother Chad Austin, his family, Kayla Kemp, spinal injury Dawson Woodruff and family Robert Lee Christy Austin's mother-in-law so let's pray for those throughout this week but I believe the Lord is already moving in this moment uh, at this time brother Gene's going to come forth for a congregational and I've said it time and time before I grew up here in congregationals and, and those times you know I, I thought man mom where's my coloring book but right now I'm just picturing being able to sing these songs in front of God. Every one of us just bowing down on our knees, saying, holy, holy, and singing the words that come to our mind. Let's worship with Brother Gene. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good to be in church tonight. Good looking crowd. Well, uh, if you don't look too close. <laughs> My friend back here in the back's grinning. I, I have a lot of fun kidding with him. Uh, Brother Dwayne been mentioned a song earlier that he really liked, and I thought tonight would be a great time to do it for him, The Old Rugged Cross. I think everybody knows it, so let's sing that.
Hallelujah. As heaven's journey gets ready to sing, I pray tonight that we would just begin to worship out of our heart, out of sincerity. Because God honors that. He blesses that. And I want him to be here with us tonight. Let's worship with him. I came here to sing a song for Jesus. You may laugh and sneer as you walk out. What I'm singing may not suit your fancy, but I came to see a soul say, Ain't that what it's all about? I didn't come to hear. all about Many come to put you on a big show They'll make you laugh and cry as they know how But I just came to sing about my Savior Oh, I came to see a soul say Ain't that what it's all What it's all about I didn't come to hear the crowd roar and laughter Oh, if I came, I chose a different round I don't know just what you came after But I came to see your soul say Ain't that what it's all about
devil's at it again. As the worship team would be making their way. Uh, I want to present a simple thought to us tonight. Uh, it was a little over three years ago when I was at youth camp. And I had been keeping God out of my life for a long time at that point. I had what you would call a wall built up between me and God. I told God that last night that I was taking that wall down. And I wanted him to move that if this was what the truth was, that he would show me, that he would move for me. Well, the Lord spoke to me when I was standing right there, and he asked me, don't you think that there's other people that want their walls taken down too? I believe there's several people here that's got walls put up that needs to put them down tonight. I want to tell you something. Joshua, he led the children of Israel around the walls of Jericho, and I'm going to tell you, he did it in obedience. And I'm sure he got beaten down. He was weariful. He, he wanted to give up. He wanted to throw in the towel. Six days, he marched around one day. Every day for six days. The seventh day, he marched around it seven times. I want to tell you, it probably feels like you're going day in, day out. Nothing's changing. You're praying for this. Nothing's changing. Day in and day out. I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm fasting. What's happening, God? Where are you? I believe that tonight, this is the seventh lap you're taking. God's waiting on you to pick up your trumpets, to pick up your instruments, to begin to sound that sound because he's kept his promise. As long as you're going to be faithful to what he's commanded, tonight he's going to get ready to bless you for it. This wall is about to come down. Let's worship.
Oh, can we magnify him? Come on, let him move. Let him move right now. God, I pray you'd move all over this place. I pray you'd move from the front to the back, from side to side. I pray you'd move in every dead situation. I pray you'd move on every uncertainty. I pray you'd trouble the waters right now, God. Oh, do you need a move? I feel you here tonight, God. Have your way right now, God. Have your way right now, God. This is your house. These are your people. Have your way right now, God. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We lift up your name. There is none as great as you. There is none as mighty as you. You are the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. You're the God of gods. You're the healer of all manner of sickness and disease. You're the miracle worker. You're the way maker. You're able, God. You bind up the brokenhearted. You give peace. You hinder us, God. You destroy depression, God. You are able, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? There's a mighty move of God here tonight. God has come to speak to his people here tonight. Oh, he's come to speak to his people tonight. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit would say unto the church. I believe God has come to give direction to someone who is in need of desperate, desperate need of direction. I believe God has come down to divinely interrupt your plans and to make known His way, to make known His plan, to make known what He has for your life. I wanted to really talk about direction tonight. I'll be honest, I sent quite a bit of scriptures upstairs and aren't you thankful for our media team? So thankful for them. I've got some announcements and stuff, but I want to get right into the word of the Lord here tonight. But our media team is not going to have what I have tonight. I, God has really dealt with me before stepping to this pulpit, and I believe he wants to speak to someone. I'm going to be reading out of the book of Numbers, chapter 22. Book of Numbers, chapter 22. Verse 22. I want to start with verse 20, actually. Let's start with verse 20. What can we just take our time here tonight? Aren't you glad to be in God's house? So thankful for all who is here last night for prayer meeting, praying for the church, praying for one another. I believe Chad said we had, Brother Chad, excuse me, that we had about 47 last night here for prayer meeting. So thankful for that. <laughs> Verse 20, and God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. I want you to hear this first verse. And God's anger was kindled because he went. Take you back to verse 20. 
God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go. But two verses later it said, And the angel of the Lord, or rather God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his donkey and his two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. The donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the donkey to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. The angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the donkey with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? Balaam said unto the donkey, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the donkey said unto Balaam, Am not I thy donkey? Not I thy donkey. I lost my place here. Sorry. Upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day. Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head. And fell flat on his face. I want to talk to us for a little night, a little bit tonight. If I could title this, I would just say, Thank God for a donkey. Thank God for a donkey. Hope to be somebody's donkey tonight. If you'll just listen to me. Can we lift our hands in this house? Father, we love you. We praise you. God, I believe you spoke to me. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would confirm your word in this house. I pray it would go forth. And God, it would let a seed be planted that would bring forth fruit, God. Oh, lead me, God, tonight. I humble myself before you. If I can just be but a voice of a donkey here tonight, God. Help me, God. To speak to a Balaam in this house. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Now some of you are probably wondering, now who in the world is Balaam and what in the world is a donkey doing talking to him? You know, God does things different than we do. Balaam, no doubt, had a relationship with God. And uh, what was happening was the children of Israel was going through a certain area of land. And there was a king there named Balak or Balak or however you want to say it. And he wanted the children of Israel to be cursed. Can I just preface this by saying tonight, what God has blessed no man can curse. And what God has cursed, it don't matter who blesses it. It's already been cursed by God. Balak's intentions were to send for a man by the name of Balaam, which had a relationship with God. And at this time in the reading was uh, able to give people, I guess he was a prophet in this day. And... The Bible says that Balak wanted to send some men unto Balaam. And so the Bible says that he sent the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian 
And they departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. As uh, you'll remember, if I've taught about this before, when uh, Saul and his servant were going unto Samuel, they wondered what they were going to take him because uh, how it went when you wanted a word from God in those days, you wanted to bring something in your hand to give to the man of God. And so they wanted him to divine some things unto him, and so they brought some rewards in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and told him the words of Balak that they wanted him to come and to curse these people. And he looked at him and he said, Look, just stay the night here, lodge here, and I'm going to bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. Uh, I want to tell this church and to everyone here under the sound of my voice This is the proper manner in which to do things. Praying before you act. When we have big decisions and things that lie before us that may not seem big to the outside world and they may not seem big to the brother or sister that's sitting beside you on the pew, but I will tell you this, God expects His people to seek his counsel before they make major decisions in their life. That's why the Bible says, acknowledge him in all of your ways and he'll direct your path. So he told him, he said, look, I can't give you an answer right now. But if you'll give me some time to pray about it and some time to seek God, I, I'll give you an answer. And the Bible said that God visited him And asked him, what men are these with thee? And Balaam said, they're Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab. He sent them unto me. And they're come out of Egypt, uh, these people. And they're wanting me to curse them. But God looked at Balaam and said, thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up early in the morning. He looked at the princes. He said, it's time to go back home. God, don't, hey, look, don't tune me out. This might be for you tonight. He said, go back home for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go unto you. And, you know, basically he was saying, God's word is bigger than your word. I, I don't care what you brought me. God said I couldn't. And they went back to Balak and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. But look what Balak did. He sent again princes that were more honorable than the ones that he sent the first time. Can I tell somebody today, hell ain't dumb. Hell ain't dumb. If that's good English, I don't think it is. He understood that in common terms, the more honorable and the more gifts that I present beside them or beside Balaam, his mind may be twisted a little bit and he may do what I want him to do. There's a verse in the Bible I was just reminded of. I forget what what section of the Bible it's in, but it talks about receiving a gift and it tells you not to receive that gift because the gift has the ability To blind you has the ability to fog your mind, to make you make a decision. Can I tell somebody here tonight that the devil has a wise and subtle way about putting things before us that taints our minds a little bit and gets our minds off of what God has already said to us? And so Balak said, I'm going to send some more princes to him, And so that's what he did. They came on down to Balaam again and said, I pray thee, uh, we, we want to you, you to come and curse these people. They said, we got something we want to give you. We want to promote you unto very great honor. And he said, I will do whatever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto them, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Can I tell somebody here under the sound of my voice tonight 
I don't care what it offers. If it is contrary to the word of God, we cannot dare entertain it. We cannot dare look that direction. Does not matter what we will get in return if we go there. If God said no, that means no. But he did something after he said those words that went against what he said. Because he said, stay here again tonight and I'm going to go and talk to the Lord about this again. The Bible says, and God came unto Balaam at night. That's what I read about earlier. If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. From our perspective, we may think, well, God is going against his word because he told him the first time not to go, but the second time he looks at him and tells him to go. I want to tell somebody here tonight, if God told you no the first time, you better not go ask him again. If God gave you strict instruction the first time, don't you dare entertain it again. Because his yes the second time isn't to fulfill your promise more than likely, but it's going to be for your destruction. This was a man who knew the voice of God. This was a man that understood that when God said no, it meant no, but still, because he had people that were pushing him in that direction, he said, I'm just going to do it for them. I, I'm just going to pray again for them. I, I, I'm just gonna, I don't want to make them angry. They, the, the, they're people that are honorable. These are good elders. These, these are good people. Can I tell somebody here tonight, uh, we have got to be determined. I don't care who is pushing me in a direction that's outside God's will from my life. I will not let them put me in a corner and force me to make a decision that that's going to lead to my destruction. I don't care how honorable they are. I don't care how many years they've been in the church. If they're telling you something that's against God's word, it is not a word from God. I'm reminded of that prophet in the Bible, and I, I don't know where it is in the Bible. You can look at it when you get home. It's there. This prophet had received a word from God. That you can't eat, you can't drink. Don't do it. But the Bible said there was an older prophet that come unto him and said, hey, why don't you come back to my house and why don't you lodge with us for a little bit and come eat dinner with us? And he looked at that prophet, Brother Caden, he said, I've done heard from God and he told me I couldn't eat or I couldn't drink. Well, that prophet said, well, God spoke to me and he told me to tell you that it's time for you to eat and start drinking. Prophet said, okay, I'll come home with you. Bible said he started eating and he started drinking. And the word of the Lord come to that prophet and said, you let him know because he disobeyed my voice. When he leaves this house, there's going to be a line that's waiting for him. And it's going to destroy him and it's going to consume him. Can I tell you the devil will use even the mightiest men to try to infiltrate your mind and try to infiltrate your heart. If God gave you a word, you better Hold on to it and say, I'm not varying from this word until I hear from God himself. God's word is final. If you can hold on to it and say, I know 100% that God spoke this to me. You better take it all the way to the bank. Don't lay it down because somebody gives you something else. Hold on to it. You and your obedience to God is going to give you favor. But Balaam went to the Lord again, started talking to him, said, hey, these same men are back. What do I need to tell them? He said, you just go ahead and go with them. And what did he do? He loaded up the next morning and he hopped on his donkey. Can I tell you, some of us don't think more than anything. We're ready to pack our bags. We're ready to hop on the donkey and say, okay, I'm, I'm going on a little ride, even if I don't feel good about it. Let me tell somebody here today, we 
have got with everything inside of us to seek out God's will for our life. We need his will in our lives. I believe I've come here tonight with a word from God for somebody who's trying to get your attention and let you know, are you looking for a word? Why don't you hang on to the one I gave you the first time? Quit trying to step outside my will. Quit trying to go to the left or to the right. If I spoke it the first time, it's still good today. Balaam. Loaded up that donkey, started headed on his way. But the Bible says as the donkey started to go, the donkey saw what Balaam could not. Isn't it sad that a donkey was more spiritual than Balaam was? Thank God he was on a spiritual-minded donkey. If not, that angel would have cut him down as soon as he took off on that donkey. But there was somebody that was with him that had a spiritual mind that God let him see. Can I tell somebody here tonight, sometimes God puts people in our corner that can speak to us, that can point us in a direction and say, hey, you can't see it because you're blinded to it, but I see what's going on here. I know you don't understand I know you're blinded right now, but if you'll just trust me, I'm trying to get you around something that's seeking to destroy you. Can I tell you, there may be some donkeys. I feel like a donkey sometimes. I don't want to open my mouth. I just want to pray, God, can you show them? God, will you speak to them? God, can you let them know? Because I know it's one thing for me to tell them, but it's another when you open up your mouth and tell them. So I'm praying, God, will you just make a difference? God, will you just lead them this way or lead them that way? Will you just speak to them? But still, what did Balaam do when that donkey moved? He smote him. Because when we're convinced, we're convinced. When we're blinded, we're blinded. We don't want nobody. Don't tell me. Don't I, 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 don't tell me. I, I don't need your help. I, I don't need your instruction. I, I've got a made up mind. But still, that second time that donkey was there. Oh, there was a, a, another angel of the Lord. The same one who was still standing there. Seeking to destroy Balaam. But that donkey had enough sensitivity. He said, I'm going to go another way. I'm going to do it with everything I can to protect he who's riding on my back but it angered Balaam again and then the third time it was in a narrow pathway he was at the end of the road he couldn't go to the left or to the right all that he could do was go forward and when that donkey could not go to the left or to the right he stopped Balaam in his tracks and he said listen you just need to stand still you don't need to move because if if I keep going forward, you're going to be destroyed. I want to tell somebody here in this building tonight, I'm trying to save your soul. I'm trying to lead you down the path of righteousness. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to make you stand still because I see what's lying ahead. He smote that donkey, beat the fire out of that donkey, and he would have killed it if he had a sword and sword in his hand. But that donkey began to open up his mouth and said, Balaam, have I ever led you wrong? Balaam, have I ever not provided for you? Balaam, have I ever went the wrong way? What you couldn't see was there was destruction that waited before you. God, let me see what you could not see. He opened up my eyes to what you were blinded of. I want to tell somebody here today, some of us, if we don't decide to start walking right, there is destruction that waits ahead of us. It's about time you hear the voice of this donkey tonight and hear me when I tell you, don't keep going forward. Hear me, hear me, hear the word of the Lord. Sure, 
Me being contrary to your will may make you mad at me. You may be upset at me. You may want to throw stones at me. You may want to slap me across the face. But I want to ask you, not because I'm perfect, but have I ever led you wrong? Have I ever condemned you to hell? Have I ever given up on you? Why would I start now leading you astray? I may be dumb as a donkey, but God can sure use me to speak to you if you'll just open up your ears and say, okay, God, I understand. I was blinded. I was going against your word. Balaam, if God spoke it to you first, you better hold on to it, Balaam. You know, sometimes... God puts people in our path that are meant to help us and are are meant to push us to that place where we need to be. I'm reminded of Abigail and y'all brethren have these verses. If you'll pull them up in 1 Samuel, I believe chapter 25, as uh, David was there with his men and they were in a wilderness. Uh, His pastor had just died uh, by the name of Samuel and I can imagine he was going through a tough time. I can imagine he had a bunch of emotion built up inside of him and he was there and there was a man by the name of Nabal and Nabal sheep shears were there in the wilderness and David and his men helped the sheep shears and so David had an idea he said since I've been good to them surely Nabal will be good to me and so he sent the young man to Nabal and said look I've been looking over your sheep shears and I just want to know can you help us out a little bit and Nabal started opening up his mouth and saying who is David who is this man I'm not giving him anything in my house let me remind you that if our decisions are always anger driven or emotionally driven we're not being God driven because those things are in the flesh somebody needs to hear me just because you feel it don't mean that's what God wants for you we feel stuff all the time I feel stuff all the time. I I get, I want to be angry and I want to do things all the time. But that that, that's not, that don't mean that's the way God wants to do it. That ain't pleasing to him. And so what happened was the men came back to David and said, Nabal railed on you. He made fun of you. He said, he ain't giving you nothing. What did David do? He looked at the men. He said, get your swords ready. We're going to destroy Nabal and his entire house. But the Bible said that Nabal had a wife by the name of Abigail. And Abigail heard what her wicked husband had done. And so she got the bread ready and she got the wine ready. She loaded it all up because she knew that her husband had messed up. And the Bible says that when she got there to David with all those provisions, she began to talk to him and say, Look, David, I know you're upset. I know my husband has done something that's terrible. I know he's made you angry but I come to tell you to not come and destroy that household what she was saying was that God sent me to get in front of you to prevent you from going somewhere that you had no business going Aren't you thankful for people that God places in our life that says, no, you can't go there. No, you don't need to do that. God has sent me here for you. And so he began to talk to Abigail and to tell her how blessed she was and how great she was and that God had had sent her his way. Can I tell somebody here today, if you love God, if you're filled with his spirit, his grace and his mercy wants to be upon you. And the beautiful thing about the Lord is even though sometimes we start to make decisions and go places that we don't need to go because he loves us so much he's willing to grab somebody and say look go give them a word today look go tell them this today because I don't want them going to Nabal's house 
you got to understand he, David could have looked at her and said I'm justified I'm the anointed of God I can do what I please I can go where I want but what he didn't realize is in the midst of his anger in the midst of his frustration there was going to be a woman there by the name of Abigail who was innocent and who was godly let me tell somebody here tonight if you make decisions based off of your anger you better be careful there may be somebody innocent that you destroy with your words there may be there somebody innocent that you destroy with your actions there's kids involved there's a marriage involved there's a relationship involved you gotta think about it before you act you gotta think about who's all involved you may not be destroyed but what if you destroy somebody who's following right behind you I come to tell somebody, David, you, you got to think before you do things. You can't let that anger force you to do things that are outside the will of God. I hope I can be an Abigail for somebody tonight and say, hey, don't do it. Hey, don't go there. Hey, I know you're angry. I know you're frustrated. I know you're mad. But don't do it. It's not God's will. He began to tell her, thank you for the advice that you gave me. Can I tell you from David's perspective, he did not have to take any advice from a woman. A better yet, a woman he didn't even know who she was, had no reputation. But can I tell you, even sometimes God uses the nobodies to redirect somebody down his path. You may look at me tonight and say, you ain't got no idea what I'm going through. You ain't got no idea what I'm facing. Who are you to try to influence me? I just feel like an Abigail tonight and I want to tell somebody I believe God sent me here to try to redirect you and try to tell you hear the word of the Lord don't do what you're planning to do that was a voice that God used that was a person that God used to redirect David we find later in scripture I believe it's first Brother, pull up those verses for Ziklag, chapter 30. There it is, 1 Samuel 30. David, come back to Ziklag. You're familiar with this. Come back there. His family's gone. Every one of them's family's gone. Everything's burnt with fire. It's been destroyed. He walked up on a mess. Bible said the people spake of stoning him. They wept till they had no power to weep. It was a tough time. It was a mess. And David had to be wondering, where do I go from here? But I'm going to tell you, something must have changed in David. Because back in, verse, in chapter 25, when he got angry, he just acted. But something must have happened to him. Because the Bible says in chapter 30 that he encouraged himself in the Lord first. But then he said, bring Bring me the ephod so I can inquire of God. Something happened in David where he determined, hey, I'm going to quit doing things just because I'm angry. I'm going to quit doing things just because I'm frustrated. I got to hear from God. I got to have direction from God. I got to have a word from God. I got to inquire. I got to hear him speaking into my ears. He was justified. He could have looked at those soldiers again and said, pick up your swords. We're going to get our families back. But no, he said, I got to hear it from God first. He's got to be in it. I messed up the first time, but I'm not messing up this time. I want to hear what the Spirit would say unto me. Then he heard it. Go. Go, oh, David. All right, God, I'll go. But am I going to recover all? Oh, yes, David. You'll recover all. You just need to go. The Bible said he started on his way. But as they were going over the brook Besor, and he had a couple that were left behind there, a couple 200, if you could say, 
There was an Egyptian, the Bible says, who was laying there who had been left dead because he was sick. He'd been left by his master. And then David and his men started feeding him and watering him. And God saved him alive and got up and they began to ask him, who are you? And he said, I'm an Egyptian. My master was an Amalekite. And we just burned Ziglag with fire. And they began to ask him, well, will you lead us to the very people that deserted you and he said I sure will if you'll save my life what does this have to do with what you're preaching pastor this Egyptian God placed him right at their feet because he was about to give them instruction and confirmation of what they wanted to do God didn't tell David where the Amalekites were but he said I'm going to put a man in your path who's going to lead you right to them this man's going to confirm my word. This man is going to lead you straight to these people and straight to your family. It's time some of us start paying attention to what God's trying to tell us. Either he's saying, go, I've given it to you. Keep going. Or he's saying, you better not go there. Open up your ears and hear what God would speak unto thee. Let me tell you the sad thing about Balaam is even after the donkey spoke to him, God came down and began to speak to Balaam, told him to go on anyway. And Balak had him still trying to curse those folks. He couldn't. He blessed them. But I found something in Scripture that hurt me. When the children of Israel were come into the land of promise, I believe it was, the Bible says they came to Balaam and they slayed him because he disobeyed the word of the Lord. Balaam, you got to understand how serious it is when you go against God's plan for your life. You got to understand how serious it is when you push past everything he's telling you no, no, no and still you keep on walking. Everything's inside of you saying don't go there. Don't do that. Don't commit that sin. Get out of that relationship. Quit sleeping with that person. Quit going to those places. Put that bottle down. Put that prescription pill bottle down. But still we keep on walking. We're saying yes, yes, yes and God's saying no. No, no, no. I come to tell you God has sent a donkey in this house to tell you tonight you better hear the voice of God. You better understand his ways are above your ways. His thoughts are above your thoughts. If he said it, you better believe it and you better obey it. You may not want to admit I'm talking to you tonight, but I'm going to preach it anyway. I want somebody to be convinced before you leave this house. You fall on an altar and say, God, forgive me for going against everything I've ever known. You know the truth. You know the word of God. You know the scriptures. And still you become blinded. You shut off your ears. You shut off your mind. God, I don't want to hear it now. I'll get right later but God's trying to tell somebody here tonight it's time you turn around now it's time you hear me now I got a plan and a purpose for you God don't want you to perish he don't want you to perish he wants you to perish you'd already be dead but his grace is being extended time and time again. If you'll just hear me. What do I got to send your way for you to understand my will? If you won't listen to my voice, if you won't listen to everybody around you, what am I going to do to persuade you to do what I've asked you to do? Young people, let me tell you. Those feelings you feel 
When you're about to do things that are not pleasing to God, that sickness you feel in your stomach, that opposition you feel before you do those things, you better get on your knees tonight and thank God. He's still letting you know what's right and what's wrong. I'm going to tell you why. Because I fear a day when he don't speak to you anymore. He don't tell you what's right, what's wrong. He don't tell you yes or he don't tell you no. He just lets you go and do as you please. But there's a donkey saying, let me shift you this way. Let me shift you this way. Let me help you do God's will. One of the saddest things that I feel that he told Balaam was, just go ahead and go. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. I don't want God just tell me to go ahead and do something that's outside his will, Brother Dylan. Oh, God, I want him to speak to me. I want him to send somebody in my corner to look me square in the eyes and say you ain't living right you ain't doing right I know what you're doing God sent me your way to tell you if you don't clear up if you don't start doing what's right there's destruction that lays ahead of you I want him to send somebody to me to straighten me out I want him to send somebody in my direction to give me some guidance and, and to give me some help I'm not above instruction I'm not above godly wisdom I'm not above his word somebody needs to get a hold of that tonight you think your britches are too big for anybody to lead you to where you need to go you need to understand God has ordained people in your life to help lead you to the promised land He's gave them a burden for your soul. I'm thankful he gave somebody a burden for my soul. I'm thankful he woke somebody up in the middle of the night and said, get on your knees and pray for them. I'm thankful he gave somebody a burden and many of them I may not ever know their name, but I'm thankful he put me on their mind. I'm thankful he put me on their heart. Why? Because he said I'm not willing for them to perish. I don't want them to die and go to hell. I want to get their attention. Even David, a man after God's own heart, the Bible said he had a man in his life by the name of Ahithophel. And the Bible said Ahithophel was as if he was talking to somebody that had the oracles of God. But even, oh yes, even with a man with the oracles of God in his hand, David still on that rooftop was looking at that naked woman and called her up to his room and was caught in adultery and was caught into murder he had a man with all the wisdom in the world but still God sent him a preacher to point his finger in his face and said David you're the man you need to straighten up you need to live right you need to do what's right you've committed sin if you want to be who I've called you to be you need to hear a word from a preacher if David needed a preacher, I need a preacher. If David needed a preacher, you need a preacher. You need somebody who's going to look at you and tell you what the word of God says. He I wish God, well, he'll let me. Sometimes... I wish I had confidence just to point my finger in your face and tell you what I feel. Oh, yeah. I told my brother one time, I said, God was drawing you in this service this morning. I felt him drawing you to the altar. I said, I almost called you out. He said, you should have. You should have. I don't want him to take somebody calling me out 
for me to get right. I want to be sensitive enough to the Spirit of God. I want to be sensitive enough to the Word of God to know if I'm going the wrong way. God, realign me. Help me to repent. Help me to see where I'm at. I don't want to go down a road that's going to lead me to hell. talking with somebody the other day they were telling me about something somebody was going through and couldn't couldn't see and understand how they could continue doing what they were doing knowing what they know and seeing everything that's going around and they wanted to know if they needed to talk to them they wanted to know if they needed to go to them and I just told them simply as this Sometimes we are so blinded to what we're facing. It takes only God to let us see really where we're at and what we're doing. It's one thing to come, somebody come to you and give you instruction, but it's another thing that you see you're in need of instruction. That's the difference with somebody walking in hungry and somebody walking in thinking they're full when in reality they're starving to death. The person that's hungry has come in to eat. But the person that's starving to death is so convinced that they got their life so much in order and they're doing exactly what God wants them to do that it don't matter what kind of service is going on, don't matter what kind of preaching, they discount everything he's saying because they say, that ain't for me. I'm doing good. That's for the person sitting down here. I want to tell you, I want to come in every service hungry and say, God, if there's something in me tonight, I want you to speak to me. I don't want to go another week in the wrong direction. Can I tell you this? It's different for us making a mistake one day. You've got one day walking in the wrong direction. It's another thing when we go a week. We go a whole lot farther walking in a week than we do one day. It's another thing when we go a month. It's another thing when we go to six months. Let me tell you something about David. The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. But I find in my study, and I may be wrong, of no recollection with him talking to God between him committing adultery with Bathsheba and then uh, Nathan coming unto him. I don't find him talking to God or God talking to him in that entire time. Probably 10, 11, 12 months, the baby was already born. It was already conceived. He went that long going without speaking to God. If a man that God was willing to tear apart out of Jerusalem and say, I'm going to keep this for David's sake. If a man that was that good and a man that was that holy could go that long without talking to God, I wonder where some of us are living tonight. It's time we get back to the basics and say, God, I, I got to have a full relationship with you. Pull me out of my sin. Pull me out of my pit. Realign me. I want to do what you've called me to do. Stand to your feet tonight, if you will. I hope I've helped somebody here tonight. I can't help you. God can only help you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, I pray right now for your power to go forth on somebody. I pray if you've spoken to a heart here tonight, God, that you can influence somebody. I believe you told me before I approach this pulpit that you were going to give direction to someone here in this room tonight. I pray, oh Lord, that you would divide our steps and put us in a place where we need to be in you, God. Will you raise your hands tonight? Will you help me pray? There's somebody here that needs this word tonight. Don't go, Balaam. Don't go. Don't go, David. You can go, Balaam, if you want to. But 
there's going to come a day when destruction awaits. David, you can go ahead. But there's somebody innocent that I've intended to be your wife. Somebody I've intended to be close to you. Somebody I've intended to help you. If you keep going, you're going to destroy them in the process. My Lord. Oh God. I'm waiting on you, Lord. Confirm your word here tonight. direction. 